Hello and welcome back to Railroads Online and I'm over here at the cattle farm which we connected up last episode and we're going to be continuing on with the farming chain and connecting up to the meat packing plant so if we just teleport over here we can have a look at it it's over in a little valley I guess well it's not really a valley there's a bit of a hill around the south over there there's a nice pond next to it it's just this big building it takes cattle and it takes coal and then it gives these boxes of corned beef. There's also been an update since the last episode and they've added a new locomotive which I cannot afford but they've more importantly added the ability to fly in the re-rail menu and I believe also in your building track you can now fly which is going to be really useful especially considering the fact that the most recent update also broke Railroads Online Extended which has been unsupported for a couple of months now I think but it now has finally actually stopped working entirely, which is rather unfortunate, but this ability to fly does somewhat make up for it. But anyway, I started building this track over here, and this is going to go to the meat packing plant fairly directly, and it goes under a bridge. This is a track that is coming down from the coal mine to join on to the oil field and logging camp. This is actually the track that I will need to take from for the meat packing plant, because it does also need coal. That's interesting, that might be useful. But anyway, I need to get this track over this way. We're going to have to come round to the side a bit here, um, just so that I can come down the gentle bit of hill, and then we're going to come in to the meat packing plant, which is, which is down there, from this side, because we can't really get down that big hill, but we can get round the smoother bit. There's also an annoying amount of, like, water and stuff around here. Can I press space? No, but I can hold S. The flight mechanics in this game that they recently added are a little bit weird to control, but it works. So yeah, we don't have much room around here. Um, not really going to have space for a loop unless I go around the back of the pond, but we'll see what I can fit. Oh, I've managed to accidentally get myself stuck in flight mode. I went to the re-rail thing to fly, and then I went to this menu, and then just closed it. And so now I'm no longer in the re-rail menu, but I'm in flight, and pressing the, like, back button doesn't doesn't do anything. I have to go into re-rail again, and then leave. They've also added a new turntable, which is just slightly bigger than than this one. If I just stick it here, you can see that it's, it's a little bigger. They've also added a new engine shed to go with new turntable so I guess it probably won't quite fit it does it does kind of fit on this turntable but not really it is designed for the new turntable and they've also added theodolites which you can use to work out the steepness of um like hills and things but I can't seem to find them like they're not in this menu they're not in facilities I can't see them in props and they shouldn't be here anyway and obviously they're not going to be in re-rail or logging unless you do it with this aha uh -huh. Yes, you do it like this. From this menu, you can then place them. And if we run up here, it says that it's a 13%. How many of these does it, does it like ping to? If I have a bunch of them, what does it do? Does it only does it just pick the two nearest ones? Not that it matters. I probably won't be spamming too many around. Anyway, it's time to actually build some track. So after the track comes under the bridge, it now goes along here, staying sort of to the right, up against the base of the hill of this mountain, and it sort of hugs the edge of the terrain for a bit here, until it gets around to this bit, when well, obviously the mountain goes off that way, so it just goes and has a nice massive fill hill, I guess, then it just curves nice and gently, going through trees that I will have to cut down. There's a lot of trees, and then it comes down to the ground level over here, and now I have to connect it up to this, so we're going to start over at this bit, and sort out this first, and then connect this back to that, and then I'll work out what I'm doing with the coal. So pretty simple, just put some tracks aligned with the platforms, and then just stuck a switch on here, and use the tree spline to connect them up. And... I don't have much room over this side to do anything at all, really. I guess I just have to connect them up and stick a turntable on it again. There we go, that should work. 
it's not particularly good. I might have to add some more lanes next to things to get trains past each other. But there probably won't be much happening down here. And now, I actually to fly this way, I guess it's... I can fly straight up the hill. I need to work out what's happening with coal, because it does it does come over here somewhere. Yeah, it's got a big bridge over here. Um, so yeah, I just stuck a switch in there. That means that this, this bit, obviously, the switch is flat, because switches cannot be on hills for some reason. So if you can see, it's coming quite sharply down there, and then it goes smack as it just goes flat into this switch and then it, it curves out this way and so this bit's steep um and then this bit's flat and then that bit goes back up the hill i should probably just um demolish that and put it back in again so that we don't have a really harsh transition onto the switch yeah that's better now it's nice and smooth there this is going to have to go down quite steep maybe like five percent it's probably only going to be a downhill track, to be honest. So here we go. It now comes off here, just goes down the edge of the hill here, and joins up there. That was pretty easy. It's pretty steep. I could probably make it shallower. I did just snap the last bit, so it does it does really shallow out here. I could probably be coming down at four percent, but it doesn't matter. There's no reason to be going up this hill. You only it would ever be going down it. Having said that. You might want to be hauling empty coal. If you need to do multiple loads of coal, you might want to be hauling the empty cars back up to get more coal. So I, I will replace this with a 4%. Turns out that to make it down at 4%, we're going to need to connect the switch on a little bit further down. Not that that really matters, because obviously I can just move the switch further down. There we go. That now connects on here rather than up there. Doesn't make really any difference. It just means that now it's just 4% rather than 5%. So if I do need to haul some coal hoppers back up, I should be able to. Now let's just chop all these trees down. Because there's a load of them on both the tracks that I just built. So the track is now clear. And now I just have to get the train and actually take some, some stuff over there. And as you can see, we have a new driving UI. Because they've, they've removed the placeholder one. Now we have this fancy one with all these different things that look cool and for some reason the sander seems to keep turning itself on. Ah yes, the sander now defaults to on, meaning that it just immediately burns through all of its sand, doing nothing. So all the information is now on like dials and things, and the temperatures of the water and the fire, which are now in Fahrenheit, and as a non-American I have absolutely no idea what these numbers mean. I have a feeling from the fact that it's not moving that that just means it's cold. And I'm still in flight mode, whoops. So I did deliver some more stuff in, in the last episode. However, it's really not much. Because I don't have much at the wheat farm. So there's 11 here which would make me two more sets. But four here isn't enough. And eight here would only make me one. So if I bring up some more water... I could get a couple more cattle, but as it is, I have like four. And the thing is that in order to get the cattle stuff, you need lots of water, and water tank cars cost 900. And then you need the the bulkhead flatheads, which are tier 3 and cost 275. And you need box cars, which are 950, just to deliver stuff that costs like 60 per car it's like you do not get much money for the amount of product you get like the products it produces very few cows pays you very little and the setup costs are huge like i can't afford another of any of them because i just don't have the money and the only car that takes cattle costs 950 so i can't even get that i guess i just have to spend ages delivering loads of stuff here in the hope that gets me enough money to be able to deliver like four cattle. So for some reason it's decided to put all the cattle that I got into this one. So we had two and two before and now we have two and eight after I did some deliveries. It's not much more but we'll see how much the cattle car can actually store because I have no idea how much capacity it even has. Because obviously it doesn't tell you until you actually start loading it. So if I tell this to load, what happens is the cow just walks up this. Um, I may not have aligned it perfectly. Hopefully it doesn't mind. Okay, good. 
it, it doesn't. Oh, it only takes six. Okay. Um, I guess we'll need more of these then. Not that I can afford them right now. Let's grab four from this one as well. Um, so we can fill up the cattle car. So yeah, we've got two. Now we just stick a couple more over here. And somehow... Oh, it's filling through at a time. So yeah, six just stand in the car like this. Yeah, that's kind of funny. They just stand there. I'm going to shut the door for realism, although the game doesn't actually care. You could just leave the door open. It's not like the cows are going to run off. And now we have to take this down the new track to the meatpacking plant where we're going to deliver the cows somehow. I don't know how that's going to work either. They're probably just going to, like, get teleported outside. Because when you deliver normal things, they are like, the product just teleports to hovering next to the thing that you've the, the car you got out of it just like teleports next to it and drops i don't know whether they're going to do that with cows or whether they're going to like turn into a cube or something because that, there are some things in the game that do that this track so far seems nice and smooth it seems fairly gentle as well i mean it's two percent so it's not particularly steep i've just put a two percent brake on we're going pretty quickly but there's no sharp corners it's a bit wobbly there and then it's just very long curve as it spins back round to get to the meatpacking plant so it shouldn't matter that we're going this fast hopefully the switch will be going the right way it should be because i think it was a left switch and we're going right and i didn't touch it so it's um it's not it's wrong oh wow we stopped really quickly they've also changed the way the switches work like, I'm pressing left here, nothing happens, you used to, like, drag it to the side, now you click right to move it right, and you click left to move it left. Except that that only works if you're standing on this side. Um, this is this is right click, and this is left click, but if I go to this side, this is left click, and this is right click, which is just confusing. So, we need to put the cows in here, let's just line this up nicely, there we go. And open the door. And then, let's see how they unload. Do they just walk back down the- <laughs> No, they just get teleported outside. That's exactly what I thought they would do. They just- they just magically teleport outside. And so now we have six cattle in here. And now we need to go and grab a bunch of coal. And it takes up to a thousand. So I'm coming back to... The meat packing plant with some coal. And... I don't know how we're going to deliver this, because there's a whole load of, like buckets here. I don't know whether it will just accept it going into any of them. I guess we find out. Yeah, that just works. I also took the other cows so that we would have 10 in here. I guess we can see the ratios because I brought 44 coal and 10 cows. So it's taken another cow and I would assume another piece of coal. Yep, I fell down. And so far it's made four boxes of corned beef. It's taking one of each input and producing two of the output. Which means that we should make 20 of these. And what do we need to transport them back in? Oh, we need a specific ventilated boxcar. Nothing else will do. Well, I might as well buy one of those and we can deliver that this episode and finish off this chain. So here is the ventilated boxcar that we have to put the cans of meat in and that is not grabbing the cans that is grabbing the floor but it works anyway and so those go in here and we can take 36 okay so yeah the, the 20 we have is definitely gonna fit in this so there we go that is all the cans loaded into this car i think that is it for the industry chain we can just take these back to the freight depot and sell them Here we are at the freight depot, and uh, we can just stop there, and get out, and unload this, and do that, and then they just pour out like this. Wow, those were not worth much at all. From that load of 20, I got a total of 400 money. That means that each box is, is worth 20, which is not very good value, considering the amount of money that it cost me to 
start up that industry chain and the amount of water that I will need to deliver to get any more farming chain not particularly valuable. But anyway, next time we will not do this chain, we will go and start the, the newest of the new industry chains, which is the gold chain, which sounds at least far more valuable. But thank you for watching, don't get distracted, go subscribe now, and until next time, goodbye.